we're live. Seventh and eighth grade, how are you guys doing? It's Mr. Pedigo, and man, this is the last week of online lesson videos, which I'm sure some of you are like, thank the Lord. I know it's been crazy. Um, I've enjoyed doing this stuff, and I hope you guys have learned a lot. We've got an exam coming up, um, not this week, but next week, which will cover all the stuff that we have learned about during our online lessons on the Google Classroom. Really going to miss you guys. I wish we could be at school right now together. Uh, end of the year is always really fun for me, all the little shenanigans we get into, and uh, I miss you guys a lot. <clears throat> but no, no tears. No tears. we got to get down to business. We're talking about um, a section of the textbook called The End of Prosperity. Prosperity means wealth, the good times, the roaring 20s, etc. And so we're talking today about ultimately how the Great Depression starts. And you guys have probably heard about the Great Depression, but this week we're actually going to really learn about it. And so today what we'll be covering is basically pages 778 and 779, how the Depression starts. And then tomorrow we'll talk about how the government responds to the Depression. So the first thing I want to talk about with this is the idea of buying stock on margin. And there's a lot of complicated, convoluted terms in this, but the idea is that um, investors, people trying to make money, were purchasing stock on borrowed money, essentially. And that could be a really great thing, right? Because you have the opportunity to make a lot of money by purchasing a stock at one price. Well, the, the key is the borrowed money. So let's say you buy a, P, a, a share in the stock market, or in the company, in the stock, and let's say it's it's currently valued, you bought it for $100. And the idea is that that $100 you borrowed from somebody else, not your money, which is a big problem. This money is borrowed, okay? Now, how can that be a good thing? Well, if you borrowed $100 and bought stock shares for $100, and $100 is just like a, a made-up term here, but let's say that that stock increases its value, and it becomes worth $200. It doubles in its value. Now, that's awesome because that means that you could pay back the money you borrowed, the $100 that you need, so minus $100 over here, pay back your borrowed money, your loan from the bank, and you have made $100. You've made profit, right? But you can probably see how that could really be a big problem if stock goes down in, in value. If you use borrowed money to buy a $100 stock, and then that goes down to $50, this marker is much better, if that goes down to $50, then you have effectively, you're, you're now, you still need to pay back 100 but what you bought is actually now only worth half what it was originally worth. That could be a major, major problem as we see happen during the beginning of the Great Depression. So that is what they are talking about in on these two pages. Borrowed money being used to purchase stock can be great if you're a gambler, kind of, you know, somebody who is, you feel confident that the stock is going to go up in value, then you could actually make money doing that. But the real negative downside to that is that if stocks start, the value of stock starts going down, then you are going to be in a financial crisis, which could ultimately lead to a recession. So that's what I have up here, recession versus depression how does a how does a recession how does a recession become a depression and what is a recession well they talk about this a little bit on pages 778 and 789 but they really talk about it more on pages or page 780 so a, a recession is essentially when businesses are failing lack of jobs Lack of jobs, lack of production, all of these things tie in to a recession. 
So what happens after the stock market crashes because of people buy, you know, buying stock with um, with borrowed money and not being able to pay that back? Banks's banks's banks, you know, collapse and crumble. People who have, you know, are working on paying off like a mortgage or other loans. It really becomes a nasty situation, and a, and a recession is a kind of caused by those things where there's a lack of jobs because companies are shutting down because they cannot afford production and they can't afford expansion and a lack of production because those businesses and those um, manufacturing companies are shutting down and ultimately there's also a fear a fear of not having enough money not having money and so people aren't buying as much and that is the recipe for a recession in the economy and so we see really what a depression is, and the textbook talks about this. A, a depression is when a recession happens for a long time. You're really in, you're in the weeds, so to speak. So a recession and a depression really aren't that different from each other. A depression is basically just a, a recession that's happened for a long, long time. And the key thing to get out of this part of the text is that the, the reason the stock market has a, a crashes and fails is because of that idea of buying stock with borrowed money. I hope you guys get that concept that, you know, they were purchasing, people were purchasing stock kind of as a gamble to see if they can make a bunch of money and then pay back the money that they borrowed. But if stock value goes down, not a good time. Hope that helps. Um, we'll pick up tomorrow on how does the government respond to this? And this is exactly, guys, what we're going through um, in a smaller way, and I hope that it doesn't become as serious, but we're going through exactly this. We're going through a recession in the economy, not because of a stock market failure necessarily, but because businesses have been forced to shut down. People are afraid of not having enough money, so they're not buying stuff as much as they normally would be. Um, companies are not being able to produce and you know expand. You probably read about in the news, you know, um, as far as the food industry goes, you know, the meat industry. Um, people having to like you know euthanize pigs and stuff like that because they just have too many of them. They don't have a they don't have any reason or means to to slaughter them and get them on the market. Scary times. So let's find out how the government handled this back then, and maybe how the government's handling this today.